25-7 in the game. What what clicked for you in the third quarter, and how important was it to drive to the basket and get some layups and kind of take what the defense was giving you to help the three-point shot finally go in? And also just uh, the explosion emotionally. You were yelling it seemingly at everybody uh, when, when you got that one to go in. Just how much of a release was it to finally see that first one go in in that third quarter? I mean, it was big. It was frustrating more so because I had the right intentions in the first half and got, I think I'm going shot six. I got five, like, wide open threes that only one of them went in. So, like I guess I always say, you never lose confidence. I do, you know, um, keep searching in the right ways to, to, to you know, find some openings and, and things to work. Obviously, I got the, the first play of the, the third quarter and got to the free throw line on the M1 and <clears throat> saw the ball go in. And, and from there, um, just the right place, the right times, we made a lot of shots, and uh, I think our offense was was really flowing when it comes to just hitting singles, as coach would always say, and take care of the ball and looking for good shots in every possession, and and from there, um, you know, it was kind of an avalanche and it felt good. Steph, over here, Chris Haynes, ESPN. You remind me about the third quarter. I'm paraphrasing that. Uh, this I already is, know. This I is your blacked out. <laughs> <laughs> Like that. Well, was that um? Do you feel like that was your emotions just just boiling over based off of, I guess the narrative that's been, you know, circling around you over the last three days? A lot of it's just talking to myself almost. Like you got to be your biggest fan sometimes. Um, and no matter, like I said, no matter what questions as I was, you know, being asked over the first two games or uh, what the expectation was, I, I have the highest expectations for myself. Um, and you just got to find whatever it is to get you going. So, I mean, obviously it felt good. <clears throat> and you want to, you know, use that energy to, you know, show your teammates that you're here, you, you, you're with them, and, and uh, get the crowd into it. Um, but it's, it's one game, and you got to have that same type of energy and, and intentions and uh, focus in the next game um, and the right approach. So. Did my job tonight, guys. Do it again. Jake McCauley from AP. How do you uh, decide whether to shake your backside afterward or go down on your back and do a snow angel or, or how, is it all spontaneous? And, and also, uh, Draymond just said that your three brings the house down the way some guys dunks do in other buildings. And, and do you sense that? Yeah, you big momentum swings when you can. Uh, there's like obviously the anticipation you come in transition or you find an open look. There's a collective hush in the crowd, and especially in this building, and um, it's a it's a it's a cool moment. So I was searching for it in the first half. Like I said, I had plenty of opportunities, just couldn't knock it down. And third quarter, it, it opened up. So um, you know, I've been doing it for a while, and won't let you know two tough games shooting keep me you know frustrated, and just keep shooting and. Uh, let, let it kind of take care of itself in that in that sense. Steph, Mark Spears, ESPN. Is there something that you've seen that, that makes you feel like uh, you, you're showing more aggressiveness going to the basket? And also, what was the key to your play defensively tonight? Um, I mean, when you think about the way that they play defense, they do a lot of switching. They try to press up on the three-point line um, and, and take away any, any daylight. And, when you have that much space, it's a little easier to, to get into the paint, you know, finish at the rim or try to, you know, probe and, and, and kick out to the weak side. And that's how I got my first three in the first half was kind of probing, bringing two to the ball, giving it up, and then relocating out. So uh, you just – you can't you can't press. I think that's the biggest thing I did in game two is three's not there. That's fine. There's plenty of other things that I can do on the court to help get the offense going. Um, Obviously, I like to shoot threes, and I'm gonna keep shooting them. But you gotta, you gotta be smart about how you, how you orchestrate the offense, and orchestrate those type of possessions. Um, and defensively, we were just solid. Like I said, just one-on-one -on -one defense, great scores on the other side of the ball. And whether you play good defense or not, they can still get a bucket. But you can't have breakdowns when it comes to, you know, having two on the ball, <coughs> or um, you know, getting a direct blow by where there's no help. All that type of stuff, and just taking those challenges on, and uh, over the course of the series, you gotta kind of gotta just man up and, and and try to get you know as many stops as you can. Steph, 
Steph over here. Ramona, right? Ramona Shell with ESPN. Um, we're all going to probably make a big deal about your little swear jar moment and everything. But how, how much how much does that does that compare to what Draymond talks about every single day when he's quarterback in that defense? And how important is his intensity and quarterbacking of the defense to what you guys do back on that side of the ball? It's huge because I think when you talk <clears throat> and you have a guy who his his eyes are surveying the floor, knowing where our advantages are, it's always like a confidence builder. When you're guarding the ball, you might seem like you're on an island, but if you hear somebody's voice behind you saying, I'm here, I'm there, you know, send them left, send them right, whatever the case is, um, you kind of, you know, ready for that possession a little bit more than if you hear silence and it's like, I don't know what to do. So uh, obviously you have to have confidence on the ball to, to, to defend, but it's not just a one-on-one -on -one type of, uh, situation is all five guys got to be ready and you have to have a guy like Draymond who's in this series in the positions that he's that he's it that he's um, you know sitting in, in the paint and whatever knowing where to send help and he was everywhere today um, and hope that and I know that I continue left hand side here Steph over here Mark Berman from Fox <coughs> Houston because you go to Houston you get the first game and you come back and you win in this fashion by 41 just winning in this fashion change the complexion of the series in any way Nah, zero zero come game four. So uh, I wish it was a, a cumulative score. <laughs> like, like golf, it doesn't work that way. Yeah, but just like yeah, like golf, um, it doesn't work that way. Zero zero. Uh, we feel like we're in a good place mentally, knowing when we're not just when we're, we're focused and locked in, but when that turn, turns into executing on both ends of the floor, that you know we can get to our type of basketball early in the game and often and, and play a complete 48 minute game. But yeah, it doesn't matter. Zero, zero come, come Tuesday and we gotta be ready. Steve? Steph, Steve, Victor, KCBS. You sort of just touched on it, but how does the team guard against complacency coming into game four so that you're sure to come out with that same defensive intensity from the beginning? I said, I think I said it was on the court at the game, Coach would probably come in and just play the game two film and just say, don't do what you're doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> and that should be a good motivator. But, I mean, a lot of people say it, like our guys have said it, there's no other motivation than you need to, than to wake up on Tuesday and know you're playing game four of the Western Conference Finals against a great team uh, with great players on that side of the court. So uh, this is kind of what you work for all year to be in these type of moments, this, this position. Um, you know, win, lose, or draw, you got to just be excited about this opportunity. We're playing high level basketball uh, in front of the world, so it's fun. Gotta be, we just got to be ready. Steph, Tony Harvey, Sacramento Observer. What kind of Steph curve is the world like when, you know, those shots are not dropping? Do you go know, after the game, go out when you normally take 1,000 shots and take 2,000 shots? What's your routine? My routine stays the same pretty much. I mean, whether I shoot. 12 for 14 from the three or one for eight. I come in the next day with the same uh, mentality and try to get better. Uh, and don't overthink it, really. I put in so much work and blessed with this, with this talent to shoot the ball. Um, for years, I, you got to rely on that and not try to get in your feelings or, or feel like, you know, the world's crashing down on you because you're not making shots. Like, wake up, eat breakfast lift weights, go out, have practice, get your shots up, and just have confidence in yourself that you can figure it out. So um, that's the story of kind of ups and downs of an NBA type of environment, you know, game in, game out. You can't get too, can't get too low, can't get too high. Three more, starting with Mark. Steph, Mark Schwartz from ESPN. I got two for you. One, Draymond talked about how your mental toughness is one of the signature things about who you are. How much do you need and rely on mental toughness in a situation like tonight when you haven't shot the ball well for two games and everyone's talking about it? And secondly, how much did you enjoy kind of doing to James Harden what he has been doing to you for so much of the series, putting you in isolation and you putting him on an island tonight? Uh, I mean, the first question, is, that is what makes, I think, a great player and a person in general, just being able to deal with, you know, Failure, frustration, whatever it is, not living up to your own expectations and not letting you know yourself get defeated. Um, plenty of opportunity to do that when you got eight hundred cameras in your face and uh, 
questions about why you're not shooting this or why you know why'd you play so bad in game two, whatever it is. You gotta out block that out and really um, be your own worst critic and your own biggest fan, like I said. So that's it's hard to do at times because everybody's human, um, but consistently that's got me through, you know, tough times and, and it really keeps me my perspective right when games go well too, because it can it can change quick, but um, and the others, just be aggressive in those situations because um, I'm gonna find myself in those type of uh, isolation situations a lot with how they how they guard. So um, you can make plays and be ready for those type of uh, one on one situations. Stepped in Calcomi, the athletic. Uh, Kerr has almost never staggered you and Durant from maybe a little bit in the beginning, and, and he staggered you very clearly in this game. Were you okay with that? Usually you play the whole first and third quarters and you were coming out even after exploding in the third quarter. You okay with that and how did it feel like to play with that second unit in the second and fourth quarters? You sit, uh, switched it up a little bit for sure. and um, The biggest thing is just staying locked in when on the bench um, for however long it is. Just stay aware of what's going on. Keep your body, your mind your mind right so when you get back in there you can, you can uh, Get back to doing what you're doing. Yeah, at the end of the third quarter, um, fought it a little bit. Like I, you know, I want to stay out here, but the rotation worked in the first half. I want to stick with it. So um, it could change game game four. Who knows? But uh, just be ready for whatever your minutes, uh, whatever your numbers called, and, and and just play. Steph Marcus Thompson with the Athletic. Last one on the. Uh, <laughs> On the uh, the shot that you hit, the uh, thirty footer, you, you have been cold since then. What is it about that shot that makes you comfortable taking it? Like after you've been cold to pull up from thirty feet, and what did you see? Like describe that place. Uh, I work on it all the time, and I've made it before. I had amnesia really. I, in that moment when you catch it, in my head I'm. Zero for zero, I'm like 10 for 10 in my head. I'm, some, just, I'm, I'm feeling good in that moment, like just shoot it. You can't can't second guess you know, your first instinct in those moments. So um, it's obviously good to see it go down. And then we got a little boost from that from that possession and we're able to uh, turn that into a, uh, a, big, a big win tonight. Great, thank you.